Hey guys, it's Brandon with Investment Joy. I feel kind of like that if I have a bunch of money in my hands, for some reason people tend to listen to me. So that's, this is just a prop. I mean, it's not like a stage prop. It's actually real money. So I wanted to talk to you in this video about how I made a whole bunch of this, actually a whole lot more than this, uh, almost $14,000, like in a really, really short amount of time, only two days. And when I say two days, I mean about like two six hour days, maybe two eight hour days. It wasn't really that long. Um, this is a, a story that I want to tell you. It's 100% true. If you get on my Discord, you could probably talk to the guy that was involved in the transaction and the real estate deal uh, to get his side of the story. Uh, but it's important. And I want to really address some things in this video because of, you know, my struggles with growing up poor, growing up uh, being evicted twice, growing up in a family where my dad drove truck and he just never made money at it. Um, I find myself at this weird point in my life being 34 years old now, 140 rentals, I own a trailer park, I own three laundromats. Most of you have seen the laundromat videos, that's why my videos are kind of like popular on YouTube and stuff is because people like looking at quarters. And the purpose or the desire, my desire, the idea with these YouTube videos is to show people in a real general sense that you can be successful, you can make money, you can make a bunch of, uh, <laughs> of this stuff based on your knowledge, not about who you are, whether you're a, a white, hillbilly, redneck, neck, Forrest Gump looking guy like I've been called on YouTube a couple times, which is fine. I, I'm, I'm a hillbilly, believe me, <laughs> I'm a hillbilly. I actually uh, got rogue, um, eat, go, going to eat roadkill tonight, so that's how big of a hillbilly I am. But um, regardless of where you are in life, your background, it is my entire belief that you, yes, you could be successful. I don't know that it's going to be with real estate investments. I don't know that it's going to be with vending machines. You could build a computer program. You could do something that makes you a bunch of money. So today I'm going to talk to you about how I made $14,000 in two days. And it involves that trailer park that I've shot some video on. I mentioned on a couple of my live, live streams that I was actually paid, yes, paid money to purchase a trailer park. Um, it was $15,000 and then I got a percentage of that. There were, oh, I didn't get a percentage. I had to pay some bills off of that with my real estate license and weird stuff. I'm not going to go into that because, you know, 14000 in two days is still pretty good. But um, we bought that trailer park, or I bought that trailer park the first part of October, and we're still very knee-deep in fixing things. It's already profitable making a little bit of money. I think we made $3,000, or we brought in $3,000 last month. That paid for a lot of the just taxes and insurance and some underlying costs that we have with the trailer park. Um, nothing to write home about, but... Overall, the trailer park is a phenomenal deal. I'll go into some more finances about it, but we only paid $225,000 out of pocket to buy a 46 unit trailer park with a warehouse. So um, there's 47 potential business opportunities there to make money. And then I'm planning on putting a little laundromat in a shed, a glorified shed that's there at the trailer park. So um, think about it. This trailer park, 47 income opportunities, $225,000 was the total out-of-pocket cash to uh, purchase it. Um, the seller is carrying back a note. Um, that I'll, I'll get into the more financial, the big finances uh, in a further video. But as it is right now, we expect to bring in revenues, not profit, but revenues of no less than $25,000 per month. And if you look at that, you know there's going to be a little bit of that money go out for cost, but $25,000 times 12 months a year, that's $300,000. Now, remember what I said earlier, uh, just a couple seconds ago, $225,000 to purchase it. So if the cost basis is low, which we expect it to be, the money that we'll call, that we call, we spent to acquire the trailer park is actually going to be paid back the first year. Would you agree with me that uh, a three hundred thousand dollar return on a two hundred and twenty five thousand dollar investment's good? You know, would you consider that a good deal? I would. So, I, and I think most people would. If you would sit down and look at those returns, it's phenomenal. Now, that's not what it's going to make, but in a perfect case scenario, it's a money printing machine. 
Now we have to bring trailers in. There's going to be more costs. It, really, it's probably going to be closer to six hundred thousand dollars. Two twenty-five out of pocket to acquire it. We're buying all these trailers. We're doing all this work. We're going to put the laundromat in. We're going to put some storage units in so the people there have some place to put their stuff. I mean, so let's let, you know. It only costs us two twenty-five out of pocket. But let's say you know worst case scenario, it's six six. Let's say six fifty even. But it's still going to bring in three hundred thousand a year in revenue. Let let's take let's say let's say that the cost is going to be hundred grand a year. That'll never happen. But still, two hundred thousand dollar a month net, not gross net income on a six hundred k investment. Does that sound good to you? I mean, if you're an established investor, that's about a thirty five percent return per year. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that is totally awesome. And anybody would be stupid not to get in that. So when I had the owner of the trailer park call me, I sat with a napkin, um, just kind of jotting numbers down and saying, okay, this is what we think the trailer park could make. This is what the costs are going to be. Let's go with our worst case scenario here. And the return was 35%. So the owner of the trailer park said, if you can figure out a way to make this work, make it work, Brandon. And to be honest with you, I don't have $600,000 sitting in my bank account somewhere. I could go out and try to refinance all my properties, the other rentals that I own, the 93 rentals. I could go out and try to refinance some of the um, laundromats, which I have no loans on, but that all takes time. And eventually there's going to be some big hedge fund or some other person's going to look at the trailer park deal and say, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is a great money maker. I'll buy it and the cost will go up. So I made the call to a guy that I know. He lives out of the state of Ohio. And I said, hey, look, I've got this trailer park investment. Um, would you want to go in with it with me on it. Do you want to be a bank, Mr. Richman? Uh, do you want to be the bank? Do you want to finance this deal? We'll be partners on it. I get ownership in it. You get ownership in it. And um, we'll make a gob of money. Now, if, if something you need to know about people that have money is nobody can buy extra time in a day. We all have 24 hours a day to spend. Yet some of us spend that time uh, sleeping, <laughs> which I like sleep, but I find out that I have to have a uh, caffeine once in a while to uh, cut down on my actual sleep. But we all have 24 hour, hours of time a day and we spend that time doing things that we either like or, uh, or have to do. We spend that on work, we spend that on play, we watch Netflix, we watch YouTube. I mean, you're watching YouTube right now. Um, so we spend that time on different things and whether you're rich or poor, you can't make any more time. Everybody's got 24 hours a day and everybody's got seven days a week. And no matter how you change the math, you just can't change, you can't get out of that. So as you move up the income brackets and you have more money, you find that your time has never changed. So then you have to pay people in the world to claw back some time. You have to find people to delegate your time to. I have people that work for me. They help and they do a lot of the maintenance on my rentals because I cannot make more hours to do it. And it's just inefficient for better or for worse to go and do that work myself. It's just how it is, unfortunately. So the, the investor who's wealthier than I am said, yeah, Brandon, this is a phenomenal investor investment. This is a phenomenal deal. I totally agree with you, Brandon. We need to do this. And I said, great. How about you fly out here to Ohio and let's go look at this dumpy, crappy trailer park. We'll probably, hopefully we won't get shot looking at it. Uh, but let's go, let's go look at this trailer park and see if you want it. Uh, the investor came from out of town, uh, came here to where I live in uh, central southern Ohio, a little bit outside Columbus. Um, and we drove around. We actually rented my cousin's car. Uh, I borrowed a um, Fiat. It's the copy of the new Mazda Miata. It's the Fiat 124 Spider Barth series. It's got the nice trim on it. The teeny little 1.4 liter engine with 23 pounds of boost. Teeny little snowblower type engine that's kind of cool. And it's a convertible. That's the first convertible I've had. So it was fun driving around. I had fun in those two days. So we drove around. We looked at all the trailer parks in the county. We looked at this trailer park multiple times. We walked through the trailers. We spent all this time together. And my investor absolutely loved it. And he said, all right, Brandon, I'm going to partner with you to buy a trailer park. You're going to manage it. I'm going to provide 100% of the money and we're going to do great on it. And I said, wonderful. I want $15,000 immediately. Yeah, I told him, I said that if you want to buy the trailer park and we're going to partner on it. So meaning I get ownership of the trailer park too. We share ownership together. Um, I told him I want $15,000 to participate because my times were something. Yep. 
yeah. So as the investor, he goes and says, well, I don't know if I want to pay that. Actually, I take it back. I started off at 35000 I said I want 35000 to uh, buy the trailer park. And then we negotiated back and forth. He came back with 5000 I came back with 25000 He came back with ten, And we finally settled on 15000 And now, to be honest with you, I don't really care about the uh, the fifteen grand. I mean, the fifteen grand sure as heck is nice. But I don't need it because I'm getting a trailer park for free. I don't spend any money. I have not. I won't spend a single dime on this property once it's up and running. And, you know, I have to spend my time on it and I'll get a partnership in this trailer park that's making 25k a month um, who knows you know we'll have to see what the net net income of it is but from my perspective I'm getting paid twenty five thousand dollars to drive this wealthy investor around town go look at trailer parks which is you know something I would do in my free time anyway he gets this guy in Ohio that's going to work his butt off to buy a trailer park and make him even more money than he is and as it stands right now, I haven't spent hardly any money out of my own pocket. I made 15K in two, two days. Um, so I don't spend any money and I get all this, all this money just for my time. I don't have a college education. I don't have this wonderful network. Well, I mean, I've got a good network now, but growing up poor, it's not like I knew rich people. Um, I knew this family, and every time I went to their house, I was scared to death that the trailer was going to fall off the side of the hill because they took these concrete blocks. I don't know if you've ever seen a single wide. You take concrete blocks and you kind of get them on top of each other because the lot was their trailer lot was on the side of the hill, and they had to have like six. 12 by 24 cinder blocks in the front of their trailer part or their trailer and in the back they had none it was just wedged up against the side of the hill and i have they, their front steps were concrete blocks so i always had this concern that the single wide trailer was going to fall off the side of the hill and the only thing that was going to prevent the trailer from rolling was their gigantic satellite dish sitting in the front yard with a concrete post dug into the ground i'm like i'm the only thing that's going to save my life if this trailer falls off the side of the hill is going to be a big giant satellite dish. And, you know, I know a lot of Gen Z people um, are watching my videos anymore, which is really cool. You need to learn about real estate and finance and how to make money. But most, most people don't know what I mean by a giant satellite dish. You know, satellite dishes anymore, they're, they're three feet, one meter across. The big old satellite dishes, they were like nine feet or uh, three meters across and they're just giant big things out in yards. And those are the kinds of people I grew up with. I don't have this professional network. I've never had this professional network growing up. And now I'm making all this money on real estate deals and finance deals and things like that. So the thing is, you can do it. I don't know how much time it's going to take you to learn those efforts but or those skills, but eventually you're going to figure out how to do it if you dedicate your life to it. And that's really the, what I want to talk about this, in this video. And it's one of the things that's, you know, this is just kind of a mindset or encouragement video that you can do it too. If me, poor redneck hillbilly Brandon that runs the Investment Joy YouTube channel can, can do it, you could do it. So if you like this kind of content, um, let me know. So please consider subscribing, liking my videos. I am on Instagram. I'm starting a Discord server to talk further about this stuff. I've got all these great people watching my channel. I, I love it. It's great. But ultimately, I want you, whoever's watching this, to learn that your skill set can really make you a lot of money if you have the effort and put the time into it. Once again, this is Brandon with Investment Joy. Thanks for watching, guys.